Would you turn to... Hmm. John 3. No, 3rd John. 3rd John. <clears throat> Third epistle of John. Glory. Anybody there? Let's speak verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may what? Prosper. Now listen, there's something about prosper. That prosper means increase. That you may increase. That you may learn more, receive more, but increase in everything. Increase, in other words, grow. Spiritually grow. That you may increase in what? That you may prosper in all things, or increase in all things. And be in what? In health. Just as your what? Your soul prospers or your soul increases. In other words, as your soul comes to the end of itself and increases more of the character of Christ. So there's an area where you and I have got to reach and constantly grabbing hold and seeking and burning through because your soul is your mind, your will, your thoughts, your emotions, your imaginations, your feelings, so forth. All of these areas is associated with your soul. In other words, so that your soul is no longer um, maintaining its carnal state, but it's supporting your spiritual state. So that the divine nature is now united with your soul. Does everybody get this? So that the character of Christ can be expressed. So there's an area where you and I have got to constantly overcome. He's saying you're not going to increase. You're not going to grow unless you or you're not going to prosper in all things until that soul is taken care of. Has everybody got it? Okay. And it says here in verse 3, For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. So what he was saying, he was saying, look at it's. I love it. I love that you are growing, that you are prospering. Why? Because I've seen your soul being converted. I've seen you no, no longer be dictated by the impressions of your soul, but the impressions of the divine nature, which is totally different. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. That is so powerful. So he says, look, there's something you're going to have to do. You're going to have to convert your soul. That's our responsibility. Has everybody got it? Amen. See, Jesus gave us everything so that our soul could be converted, transformed into the image and likeness of Christ. Remember, one of his greatest desires is that we see what he sees. We hear what he hears. And you know what else? We feel what he feels. I'm going to say that again, that we see what he sees, we hear what he hears, and we feel what he feels. In Luke chapter 4. Luke 4. And verse you know, one of the things, one of the first things that occurred to me when a day, when a, when a day of visitation happened in my life when I was converted, transformed, transfigured <laughs> praise God when I died <laughs> and rose again <laughs> in Christ um, one of the first things that occurred to me the first thing after I repented and I accepted Jesus was I felt his pain I wept so hard I never felt so much pain in my life and it was not physical I had no control over the pain that I felt it was an inner gut part of me that gave me so much. It was like a pain of sorrow. And I, and I, and I didn't understand it. I mean, you know, if you got to remember, I never read the Bible. I didn't know nothing. And all of a sudden, these words came out of my mouth saying, God, why are you allowing me to feel your pain? 
And I realized afterwards, because he wanted me to know the pain that he has for his lost people. That pain turned into compassion. See, some of your pains have turned into compassion. Some of the things that you've gone through that brought pain to yourself. Because the word says when we've gone astray, we fall into afflictions, have now brought compassion in many ways. But that's a, an emotion from God, compassion, isn't it? Not pity, compassion. So one of the things that the Lord's trying to do in our soul is exchange something. Exchange everything over so that we feel what he feels. We see what he sees. We hear what he hears. Why? Because then we become more like him. And remember, the more that, that begins to happen in your life, the more he can trust you. Because his desire is that you become him. In Luke 4, in verse 1, would you read it with me? Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward when he had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Now, did the devil know Jesus was hungry? Yes. You notice that he didn't attack until Jesus came to his lowest point? <laughs> Hello. But Jesus answered him and he said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God or by the voice of God. Now, I want you to grab hold of something here. It says that he being filled with the Holy Spirit, Return from the Jordan was led by the Spirit. We got to begin to look at the Holy Spirit as the voice of God. So in other words, the voice of God led Jesus into the wilderness. The voice of God was the only voice that can overcome the voice of the enemy. And these voices of the enemy are called emotional voices. Hello. Because that's all he's trying to do is affect your soul. Does everybody get this? They're called emotional voices. Watch the three major emotional voices that came up here. And, of course, Jesus was hungry. Is hunger an emotion? Yes. Okay, in verse 5. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to them, All this authority I will give to you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me. Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. In other words, you shall worship the voice of God. You shall serve the voice of God. See, there was a battle going on between voices. One was attacking by emotion. What was he trying to do? Promote him. He was trying to give him a desire of the world. These are all emotional voices. Remember, emotional voices is what you and I battle. Every demon, every demon carries an emotional voice. In fact, what he speaks, every demon is an emotional voice. They are emotional voices. And then he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a high pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you and keep you. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered and said, It has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Well, pride is what tempts it. The pride of life, which is an emotion. What it says is, I'm God. See, in the world. Now, when the devil had ended every temptation... 
He departed from him until a what? Oh, snap it. Until what? An opportune time. Voices that provoke bring forth reaction to an emotional voice. These vo look at these voices that were in the wilderness with Jesus, that voice. The devil provoked him, didn't he? He was provoking him. But he was provoking him to react. Amen? He was provoking him to react to an emotional voice. These are three characters. Categories of emotional voices. Lust of the flesh. Overwhelming desire to feed flesh. Lust of the eye to stimulate a visual thought of emotional desire. I'll repeat it. And the pride of this life. Self-exaltation and emotional desire for control. False, <laughs> false protection. I am self-God. Does everybody understand that? I'll, I'll repeat it again. The categories are lust of the flesh, overwhelming desire to feed the flesh. Lust of the eye, to stimulate visual thought of emotional desires. To stimulate visual thought of emotional desires. And the pride of this life. See, the pride of life is the pride of this life. Life in the physical. Which is self-exaltation. Actually, it's false independence. <laughs> it is an emotional desire for control. It has a false protection, and it says, I am self-God, or God of self. One of the things Jesus said, look at man, you, you, man cannot live, cannot overcome, cannot be victorious with only one voice, only if he has the voice of God. The Holy Spirit came as the voice of God. Jesus came as the voice of God. In fact, if you think about it, Jesus did not go out and do anything until the Holy Spirit came upon him. Right? He was the voice of God. And then he went and fought. They immediately went and fought. Voice of God to overcome emotional voices. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the things that these emotional voices do is they promote false hope. Sin and separation from the will of God. And bondage of captivity. False hope, sin, separation of, from the will of God and bondage of captivity. Emotional voices. Every demonic force has a characteristic of an emotional voice. 2 Corinthians 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6. And verse 11. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections or what? Emotional, emotional voices. That's what's causing them. They are restricted. Remember, emotional voices, these emotional spirits, these emotional demonic forces. This is how everything is established. Look here, we live a life of memory. In fact, we live a life of emotion. 
Because every memory has a burned emotion to it. Everything is associated with how you feel. I mean, remember, we came from the greatest feel good. And then that's why he's called the most high, right? <laughs> so we came from whoo That's where God sent us from. So we love to feel fantastic. I love to feel fantastic. And that fantastic feeling can only come from his presence. And there's nothing wrong with feeling that great. How do you feel? I'm blessed and highly favored. Praise be to God. I have the joy of the Lord. He's my strength. This allows me to be stronger in the power of his might and not my own. I was in Lowe's today and getting something, and this woman was checking me out. And I get sense she wasn't right. I said, how are you doing on here? Oh, man, you need to pray for me. <laughs> Praise God. No problem. <laughs> My first thoughts were, come out, but. <laughs> um, that was my first thought. <laughs> the Lord said, hold on, Sonny. <laughs> she needs to know my word. Encourage her with my word. I said, well, you know, you're the light here. What's the problem? Oh, man. She goes, I need to hear this. I said, well, the word says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He was in you as greater than you. She started, then she took off and started quoting scripture. Checked me out, and I said, bye. That's all she needed. She goes, I needed that. Thank you. She just needed to quote the voice of God to overcome the emotional voices that were attacking her. You know why? Because the enemy brought her to you, her and she said, you feel terrible. <laughs> You're struggling. Nobody loves you. Oh, God. You made a mistake. That's it. You're going to die. <laughs> Seems like every voice from hell just showed up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I left her all joyful, you know, hallelujah, praise God, thank you, Lord. Of course, I went in there with joy. You're not restricted by us, but you're restricted by your, the emotional voices that hinder you. Verse 13, now in return for the same, I speak as to children. You also be what? Open. Don't be unevenly yoked with emotional voices. Why? An unbeliever is an emotional voice. That's what the word says, bad company corrupts good habits. Why? Because that's an emotional voice. Listen, the devil uses everything and anything. Well, we know about emotional attachments. Well, that emotional voice is going to burn an emotional attachment to something that becomes an idol or a fear or a hold or a stronghold or whatever it is. But these demons are emotional walking voices. And the word, it tells us in the book of Genesis that after the, the fallen angels came and produced offsprings and, and then the, and they continued to produce offsprings for four to 500 years, it says God had to kill them all because all their intents were constantly evil. In other words, their desires were constantly evil. Those are emotional desires. That's what the powers of darkness want to do. They are emotional voices of evil. They're emotional voices of sin. Amen? Praise God. So don't be unevenly yoked with an emotional voice. For what fellowship has righteousness with an emotional voice? Lawlessness. And what communion has light with? Darkness, which is a what? Emotional voice. And what accord has with Belial? Oh, a snap. One of the head honchos of emotional voices. And what part is an unbeliever with, I mean, a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement is the temple of God with an emotional voice? Why you agree with it? For you are the temple of the living God, where the voice of God is in you. As God has said, I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God, and they shall be my people. If 
you will come out from among them. What's them? Emotional voices. <laughs> and be separate, says the Lord, and quit touching or agreeing with these unclean emotional voices. And I will receive you. I'll be a daddy to you. And you'll be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Why? Because those emotional voices cause separation. They cause sin and separation. They're restricted from emotional voices, unevenly yoked with them. In James chapter 1. And again, we've talked about this before. People that make too many decisions emotionally. How many all know that the devil wants to speak, come and speak to you, release an emotional desire in you so that you cooperate with his will and not God's? James chapter 1 and verse 12. Blessed. Everyone say blessed. Amen. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Three categories, right? Blessed the eye, blessed the flesh, pride of life. Those are all emotional voices. Blessed is that man. Well, what about the one that doesn't? Snagged, cursed, bound up. <laughs> Just a matter of time, he turns into an idiot or a moron. For when he has been approved... He will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, because he's not an emotional voice of evil. He's an emotional voice, though. It says, I love you. I'm with you. Does everybody get it? I forgive you. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he's drawn away by emotional voices and then what? Enticed. Enticed, whoo, grabbed hold of, connected. Then when that desire, because their emotional voice has just released a desire, has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin when it's full grown brings forth what? death. Do not be deceived my beloved brethren. Every good and every perfect gift is from where? Above from God. And comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Enticed by an emotional voice called desire. Always trying to put a desire. Desires are over. In other words the same thing as lust. Lust is an overwhelming desire. Remember, we shared about every thought has a voice, every voice has a presence. Every presence has an emotion. Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3. Verse 1, origin of the emotional voice of evil. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field whom the Lord God had made. And he enticed, he said to the woman, as God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Hmm. And a woman said, to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not die. Oh, hallelujah. For God knows that in the, in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, just like how I thought. That's what the serpent, just like me, that's how I was, became stupid. I wanted to be like God. Didn't work. 
Knowing good and evil. And of course, a woman said, well, look at it, man. I, I like this idea. Everything sounds good. Thank you so much for this information. Let's, let's get down. Let's partake. So a woman saw that the tree was good for the flesh. That it was pleasant to the loss of the eyes. And it's tree desirable to make me prideful. So she took of its fruit and ate and partook. She got pregnant and all hell broke out. She also gave to her husband and he blew it too. And then they all fell. <laughs> the Lord threw everybody out of the pool. And now, all the desires from the emotional voices of deception to entice with lies and false hopes and sin and separation and bondage. Amen? <laughs> Isaiah 14, is everybody there? That's how, you know, the Luciferians became Lustiferians. Isaiah 14 and verse 12. Emotional voices. Is everybody there? <clears throat> how you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the far sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And I will be like the most high God. See, he became prideful. It was the pride of his creation. Does everybody get it? Lucifer, emotional voice of pride with self-exaltation, false hope, emotional desire of false fulfillment. He wanted control, and he wanted to be God. Hmm. With what? All of his beauty and wisdom. His talents that God had given him. He wanted to be above God. He wanted to be worshipped like God was worshipped. Of course, the Lord's response is, you're going to hell, homie. You shall be brought down to hell, to the lowest depths of the pit. And what else? And those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble? Who shook kingdoms? Why? By emotional voices who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities and who did not open the house of his prisoners. Many people are taken into prison captivity by these emotional voices. They make decisions by emotion. Everything is a by emotion, which are the most dangerous people around. Ezekiel 28 Ezekiel 28, in verse 1. Let's read this together. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, thus says the Lord God, because your heart is lifted up. Now, who's he speaking to? Who's he speaking about? He's speaking about Lucifer. And you say, I am a what? God. I sit in the seat of gods, in the midst of the seas. Yet you are a man and not a God. Though you set your heart as the heart of God. Again, this is pride. Does everybody get it? Amen. Behold, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and your understanding, you gained riches for yourself. For who? 
yourself. And gather gold and silver into your treasuries. But by your great wisdom and trade, you have increased your riches. And your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, thus says the Lord, because you have set your heart as the heart of a God. Now listen, that's what the fallen angels have done. That's what the uh, 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 enlightened ones, Illuminati's and the seed of the serpent, that's what they've done. They've called themselves God. They actually believe that there's, they are the gift to God. He said, because you have set your heart as the heart of a God, Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers against you, the most terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. They shall throw you down into the pit, and you shall die the death of the slain in the midst of the seas. Will you still say before him who slays you, I am a God? But you shall be a man and not a God in the hand of him who slays you. You shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hands of what? Aliens. For I have spoken, says the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord, you are the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Who's he talking about? Lucifer. You were in need in the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering the Sardius, topaz, diamond, braille, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, emerald with gold. And the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for the day you were created. In other words, here we are talking about the original voice of pride. The original emotional voice of pride. Does everybody get it? So the original voice of pride knew how to create and establish music. See, through music, he could reach much further and infiltrate the hearts of mankind. He said, verse 14, you were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in all of your ways until you were, uh, from the day you were created until iniquity was found in you. He was the original emotional voice of self influencing the world. The pride of life, self. With music to capture humans with emotional voices of deception by fallen angels, demons, and human spirits of self. Of course, they created emotional attachments, they created sin. So just think how music really affects many people. Uh, music is nothing but an emotional extension of voices. Many of it brings false hope, doesn't it? Promotes sin. Promotes another character in a person. Yeah. That's why you and I are not to associate with secular world music. We must know the origination of it. Many people don't, oh, I don't believe any of that. Well, and you can tell by their fruits. In fact, some of them aren't here tonight. First Timothy chapter 4. Say that with me. One voice leads to many. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed, giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits or what? Emotional voices. And doctrines of demons. Well, listen. The voices also are in books. <laughs> They're in books. They're in movies. They're in music. They're all over. 
The enemy has this stamp and seal on multiple things to release an emotional voice. It's on money. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. They've been deceived by emotional voices. Emotional voices and letters and doctrines that people read, watch, hear, believe, and are deceived. Look at it. How about culture? Look at how many emotional vo voices have been brought down by family's culture. When you think about it, where did the cultures originate from? The Tower of Babel. That's where all cultures originated from. And what did God do? Because they were exalting themselves, amen, they were trying to build a tower because they, they believed that they were gods and trying to avoid the flood, thinking they could build a tower high enough. And they all had one voice, didn't they? And the Lord came in and separated the voices. But those voices just multiplied into more emotional voices involved in cultures. Why? Because its origination was from the Tower of Babel, which was Nimrod, who was also a Nephilim. Is everybody okay? Oh, Acts chapter 10. Nimrod was a giant. The Babylonian system. Emotional voices. Acts 10, 36. The word which came sent to the children of Israel preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of what? All. All. That, word would, you, that word you know which was proclaimed throughout Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. With the voice of God and with power and went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the emotional voices of the devil. Why? Because the devil oppresses. Does everybody get it? For God was with him. The devil, Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit to rescue those oppressed by the emotional voices of evil. He was anointed. That anointing is known as not only the eternal presence and power and truth of God Almighty, but the voice of God Almighty. Isaiah 61, which we love. And we're going to confess this again tonight. Except for when we say the Spirit of the Lord, we're going to say the voice of God is upon me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. The voice of God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be tr called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be what? Glorified. Now look at this. And they will what? Rebuild the old ruins. They shall rise up from the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the desolation of many judges. Why did these happen? Because of emotional voices where man began to kill one another. <coughs> what is actually promoting war? Hatred. It's an emotion. 
Look at the people at the Middle East and over in the other countries. They're taught, those children are taught from the beginning to hate. To hate. There's a much abuse to women. They really don't have much say. It's hate from the all originated from the voice of pride, that first emotion, and it increased. Wow. Verse 6, you shall be named, uh, wait a minute, verse 5, strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. You shall be named the priests of the Lord. Why? Because the voice of of the Lord is upon you. They shall call you the servants of our God. Why? Because you express his voice. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame shall have double honor, and instead of confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess double everlasting joy shall be theirs. The spirit of the Lord is the voice of God. And the Bible is the written voice. To what? Overcome emotional voices of evil. Amen? Remember, the enemy, is, he, he's released all of these things in movies, cultures, books, education. How about addiction? Isn't that just, that's the same thing. It's a voice of emotion. Lust is nothing but a voice of emotion. Memories. Now, again, there are areas where in the physical realm, the voice of emotion, you can see all over the place. How about, you know, certain things of not only books, and, but then you've got pornography. You've got all kinds of things. Then you've got movies that promote hatred. You've got all kinds of things that are releasing, even, even in the medical field. Look how many people fall into fear, go to the doctor, and they leave fear. Oh, God, I have this. See, what the, 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 the whole thing of the... Um, the emotional voices are trying to prevent me and you from standing on the voice of God, the word of God. See, they're trying to convince us that God can't do it. Does everybody understand? And, and there's that, that's where that battle is, isn't there? It's the battle of voices where we stand on the word of God in everything. Where we know he says all things work to the good to those who love him. It says that he, we're more than conquerors. Amen? See, you, we have to battle for everything. And there's some things I don't battle with. If I got a headache, I say, I go open the Advil, take a couple, pop them, and I say, thank you, Lord. I ain't battling with this one. But then there are other things I have to battle. Does everybody get it? I have to battle certain pains, certain afflictions, certain things at the enemy. And you can feel it creep up. I'm telling you, there's things that all of a sudden happen. And if you just allow, oh, let it continue, it gets worse. But if you go after it right away, no, in the name of Jesus. Does everybody understand that? There are things that you've got to battle for. Or if you allow one voice to overcome, more voices will. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. You know, remember, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's moving people away from the will of God by emotional voices. Let's go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse uh, 10. You know, I believe that the Holy Spirit is trying to bring more in the area of, you know, besides just fighting demons, 
and so forth, when it says we are, we are fighting emotional voices. You know, you'll know the voice by the emotion. What's it promoting? What kind of desire is it promoting? You'll know the voice. Why? Well, then you know because that voice is a thought. Where there's a thought, there's a voice, that voice is carrying a presence. And you're going to know, just like what the word says, you'll know the fruit. You'll know the tree by the fruit, right? You'll know the same thing. You'll know the voice by the emotion. Because that voice will always release an emotion. And the voice of God will release peace, joy, and righteousness. So everybody got it? Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit, which is the kingdom of God. Okay, Ephesians 6, verse 10, let's speak it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the voices of evil. <laughs> Emotional voices of evil. That's what we're fighting. What are they doing? They're trying to trick us, right? Against the wiles of the devil, trickery. Verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Hello. So, the un so you have a physical realm that is releasing the voice of um, the emotional voices of evil, but you have an unseen realm which is tempting you with the emotional voices of evil. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Why? Because every day is evil. Stand therefore, girding your waist with what? Truth. Putting on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Why? Because this is the voice of God. Basically what he's saying is, man, get filled with the voice of God. Get dressed with the voice of God. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Now wait a minute. Faith comes by what? Hearing what? The word of God, which is also the voice of God. So what he's telling you is, watch this, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So it's the voice of God that is going to quench the emotional voices of evil. And that is it. You can't quench an emotional voice of evil with another emotion. I think people try to do that. Has everybody got it? Praise God. Shield of faith by hearing the voice of God to quench the fiery darts of emotional voices of evil. In Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. Look at uh, Samson with Delilah. Look at King, uh, uh, what's King Saul. What did he do? He, re he accepted the voice of emotion of the people. Look at Adam. What did he do? He, heard, he took heed of the emotional voice of his wife. Does everybody get this? See, we've got to stop being men pleasers by emotion and be a God pleaser. Oh, glory. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 7. Therefore, the voice of God says, <laughs> if you will what? Hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts as in rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my, 40 year, my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said they always go astray where? In their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you a what? Evil heart. Well, how did that happen? Through what? An emotional voice. Of unbelief. Remember, that's the ploy of the enemy. 
If he can get you to reason, he can get you to unbelief or doubt. He gets you to reason that when people reason, they begin to question God. It starts with reasoning. Why? Because reasoning is a guarantee in a faith. He gets a person, didn't he did it with Eve? He got her to reason, question God. Then he promoted doubt. And then he severed the relationship with unbelief. Oh, hallelujah. Be, beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sins. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. In other words, if you hold fast to his voice. Well, it is said today, if you will hear his voice and do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. Wow. Now, the Holy Spirit is the voice of God. When rejected because of emotional voices of evil captured by the heart, it produces with false hope and desires to fulfill self. What it does is it blackens the heart, almost like a cancer. It hardens. It blinds from truth. It refuses. It rejects. It has a false protection of emotion because of the emotional voices. It, it promotes the voice uh, uh, and promotes the fruits of rebellion, unbelief, stubbornness, disrespect, deceit of lust. It leads people to a life of sin and death. Addiction, same way. How about guilt and condemnation? Those are all emotions. The word says that you are a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. A new creation in Christ says I'm stepping into the voice of God. I'm allowing the voice of God to rule my life and no other voice. Does everybody get it? Because I can only combat the emotional voices of evil and deception with the voice of God. Just how Jesus did in the wilderness. Romans 8. Romans 8, verse 12. Let's speak it together. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. Hmm. But if by the Spirit you put to, de to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the voice of God or the Spirit of God, these are what? Sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to what? Fear. Well, what did he just tell us? He said, look, at there's an emotional voice called fear. And God has not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. Fear always starts with reasoning, questioning God. Why? Because fear is involved. Why? Because the reason why people begin to question God is because that fear comes thinking that God is holding something back from them. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, or Daddy. The spirit himself bears witness. The voice of God bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we also may be glorified together with him. Wow. Emotional voices of fear, anxiety, stress, worry. Disconnect. That's what they do. The purpose is to disconnect from the presence and the voice of God. It misleads people into bondage. Go to James 3. Man, those voices get us in trouble every time, man. And that's where people think that their thoughts are their own. If people begin to maintain, always constantly looking at fruit, looking at fruit, 
You know, you can always ask yourself, who told me that? It makes it real simple. Who told me that? Where'd you come from? And I know the emotion that you're trying to release on me. Amen. <laughs> James 3 and verse 13. Let's speak it. Who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have what? Bitter. bitter. Is bitter an emotion? Yeah, it's an emotional voice that's promoting it. How about envy? How about self-seeking? In your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. But that's what happens. The heart becomes hardened, rejects truth, and even will justify everything they're doing. Try to tell somebody who's been who already bit the bait. Man, that whole continence comes on that person. There's, they, the, they just stepped in zombie zone. Man, you know you're doing the wrong thing. I know. <laughs> but I can't stop myself. Well, you can if you just use the voice of God. Amen. See, can't and stop you can't stop yourself. I can't do this. I can't. It's all the voice of emotional evil. Amen. Then they justify with a butt butt. That ain't going to work either. Hallelujah. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy, self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above. It is earthly, sensual, and demonic. In other words, this is an emotional voice of evil. And where, and for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and what? Everything, every evil thing are there. In other words, you allow one voice, you can expect multiples to follow. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. For the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Emotional voices of self-seeking and pride and every evil voice is there. Now I want to close in Ephesians 5. You know, there, I don't know if you saw it today, a dude started himself on fire today because Hillary Clinton didn't win the presidency. Poured gasoline on himself and lit himself up. Talk about an emotional voice of stupidity, I'm telling you. <laughs> this guy was crying. People were crying. I know people. Um, anyways, they were crying because she didn't win. Because the emotional voice of evil is deceived individuals, thinking that these people are righteous, that they're good. I, I'm telling you, I, I know people that think that, oh, that's the best employment we've ever had. It's the worst. They believe in all of the news and emotional news stuff. I mean, I mean, man, you listen to the news long enough, you become emotionally nuts. You'll be flip-flopping, you know. The media is what releases a lot of the, I mean, the, the devil uses the media, you know. Especially if you watch a football game in between the commercials. Oh, my God, you talk about emotional voices. Halftime, you got to shut off. Amen. Hallelujah. It's like a Victoria's Secret show or something. It's sick. A lot of it is perverse. And it's demonic. They do ritual uh, sac uh, ritual. Demonic uh, things out there. And anyways, Ephesians 5. In verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, be what? Imitators. Imitators of God as dear children. And walk in love. As Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and sacrifice for, to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness 
or covetousness. Are those emotional voices influencing people? You betcha. Look at all the hoarders. I mean, man, they got, I don't know if you've seen those. I mean, man, their houses are packed. I mean, they got antiques in there, like antique newspapers. They got animals that are, I don't even want to go there. I mean, there's stuff all over. It's disgusting. And, you know, that's just from emotional. And they, and they try to, you know, people are dragging their parents out, their mother and father. And they've been living like that for so long. They finally came back. It's like, man, you got to get out. I can't leave. I can't leave. We had a we uh, we had a call one day and 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 this girl wanted to come to the program and 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 her husband says I don't know how I'm going to get her there. Well, man, don't you have a car? Yeah, but she won't leave her room. Amen. She won't leave her room. I thought, well, man, you need to convince her to get out of that room if she wants to get free. Put a blindfold or put a bag over her head. I don't care what you got to do. <laughs> Get her out of it. I said, if you can just get her here, praise God. God will do something. So she, she, he pulls off. She didn't have a bag on her head. And, and, and she was sitting in the car. And we opened the door and convinced her. I mean, it was basically, there was almost like a tug of war. Come on, you can come out. So she finally came in. And she came in, and when she came in the living room, just told the girls, pray in the Holy Ghost. And as they began to pray in the Holy Ghost, so did she. So did she. And, and, and you know, she went through a lot of stuff because she'd been on medication for years. All kinds of psych medications, all kinds of stuff, and morphine and all kinds of things. I mean, there were days that that girl fought. She was on her hands and knees crawling in the living room to a couch. She fought, but I can tell you she's got freed, restored to her family. She's been serving the Lord many years now. Amen? Praise God. Ephesians 5. Are we still there? All right. <laughs> Let's try verse 3 again. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither what? Filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. Why? These are all influenced by emotional voices, aren't they? For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words or emotional what? Voices. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to God. And do not have fellowship with unfruitful works of Darkness or what? Emotional voices. But rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, which is the word of God, the voice of God. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep and arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly not as what? Fools. As fools, but as what? Wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Very powerful. So everybody got it. So we're to expose it, but you got it. That's why it's constant self-examination. Listen, you'll know the voice by its emotion. Amen. Sometimes, it, sometimes it's difficult. People don't realize because they're caught up in things of discerning the voice. But if you'll just look at the emotion, if you'll sense that emotion, what's influencing me? Is it fear? Is it lust? Is it anxiety? Am I angry? Am I bitter? How about offended? Hello? Offense? My goodness. 
People get offended so easy. God said that he didn't say you wouldn't be a, the offense wouldn't come. It's what you do with it. In other words, what are you going to do with that voice when he shows up? Kick him out. Amen. Kick it out. Get rid of it. Cast it out. What do you think stronghold is? It's a memory lie, isn't it? It all started from an emotional voice. And when we agreed with it, it burned in us and it's been hindering us ever since. Especially from our past. Boy, there's a lot of emotional burns in our past. Dear God. But that's why you got to confess the voice of God, the word of God. I am a new creation in Christ. All of those emotional voices are behind me. Look what Jesus did to the emotional voice that came through Peter. Get behind me, Satan. Amen? You're an offense to me. You're only concerned about you, not me. You're not concerned about the kingdom of God and the will of God, but you're concerned about the will of man. So we've got to stand strong and be prepared. Continue self-examination. You know, going through deliverance is nothing but removing emotional voices. That's what deliverance is. Hallelujah. Once they're gone, they take everything else with them. So, Father, we give you glory and honor and praise. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for exposing the emotional voices of evil. Lord, we ask that you continue to release the emotion of peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit, your voice, your word. Let it penetrate every part of our being so that your divine nature can possess us because we can only fight with your voice, your word. That's it. Nothing else works. So Lord, bring to remembrance every time we come into an arena of attack or when you send us to go attack, that you're with us. And if you be with us, who can be against us? In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen.